in the house, Speaker of the House. You got a GPS in that car? What happened? Traffic? Traffic? <laughs> Traffic. Traffic? My gracious. We got some good Mississippians who are out early getting to work this morning. <laughs> they I got behind are. one of them who decided to drive the speed limit. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> I'm, I'm telling you, man. Is it still foggy out there? Yes, sir. Bit, it's still overcast, still a little foggy. Rather you be careful. Looks like wintertime. I do notice the days are getting shorter. Yeah, right. Yes, they are. And uh, I asked um, Cindy Hyde Smith the other day, she said there's no talk about it. Marco Rubio had a bill to, to stay on. On the right stay on at right. least one year this this right. bill and if he could have gotten enough support but mm-hmm. apparently there's not enough chatter for some reason they got other things to talk about in washington we actually passed that bill in the legislature this I know. past session said if uh, if the federal government if the government did it. changes it we adopt it so. i think this would be the perfect year to do that and we could blame it on COVID 19 we, yeah so. we, we could and i think most people support mm-hmm. that idea i do and, and i i, I agree they like you, the I longer days well, you know, we won't get that hour back, but what do you do? Right. You'll I die think, an hour earlier. I think people like the longer <laughs> days. They want to. And most folks will say, well, we want to go off. We want to get rid of daylight savings yeah. time. I don't think that's quite right. I think they want daylight they savings do. time. They do. In other words. They, they state it incorrectly. If they, you wanted it on what we have now, that would be daylight right. savings time. People want the longer yeah. days, and the longer days are daylight savings time. Maybe something will pop up. I'm not sure exactly how long they have to do this, but uh, we will see. Well, it'll be a continued just, uh, point of discussion. I think a couple couple of states like Arizona, maybe mm-hmm. Indiana, they don't do it anyway. What um how are you feeling? Doing well this morning. Thank you, Paul. You, Glad to be here. Are you back full strength there? Oh yes, sir. No hangovers. I have from been for COVID? quite some time. Oh no. I got I declared myself well on July the fourteenth. So. <laughs> you you watch this, you talk to a lot of people out there and you look at the, the how this the weirdness of this is if you had another test, would you have even tested? positive because apparently know. you didn't have enough virons in your whatever they call it and uh, the virus was not that substantial within your system yeah i don't know that that's a good question i, I have found it interesting to talk to others who've had it and mm-hmm. how the symptoms are not necessarily uniform uh, everyone experiences a different uh, reaction to it seems like there's one common thread of a loss of taste but other than that and i've even talked to some who didn't lose their taste yeah. did, did that return Mine did, yeah. yeah and yeah. smell, too. And, and my, my first thing to come back was my sweet taste of sweet things. That could have been but, left out, couldn't but it? But for others, uh, it's <laughs> the salty thing. And some people say they don't even want to salt their food anymore. So mm. it's a strange thing. Uh, it is. I want to ask you a couple of things. First of all, let's get this out of the way. The the special session, not special session, the resumption of the 2020, where are we? What's the status of that now from the speaker? Well, right now we're looking at coming back next Thursday, October the 1st. That, could, of course, could change depending on what happens. But at this point, that is the plan. Uh, we have uh, two days to get uh, the final uh, work done. And, of course, what we're coming back for is simply to adjust any CARES Act mm-hmm. expended tours. The CARES Act money came down. We left in, I guess we passed most of our bills at the end of June regarding the CARES Act money. We put the money where we thought it would best be needed, uh, but we reserved some days for ourselves mm-hmm. to come back and adjust those dollars. If we we put money, at back in June, we thought money ought to go to one particular place, and now it looks like it's not needed or it's not all been spent. This gives us the privilege of coming back and, and shifting those dollars around, putting it in other places, and then uh, deciding where it's going to go before December. Do you have any 30th. idea how much we have and how much we spent so, you know, as the, far the, as level we, accounting of that? Yes, we're, we're, we're getting that information. In fact, yesterday we had budget hearings, mm-hmm. and uh, at the budget hearings we had uh, the corrections uh, uh, division or, or department there. Um, we had given them $20 million to to use, and they've only spent a small amount of that. So I specifically asked them, hey, you've, you've received this amount of money. Are you going to spend it or not? And they assured me, yes, they have a plan. they got to spend it for December 30th. They're well aware of that. Same with the Department of Ed. We asked them the same question. And so we're trying to gather that information. And for those people who assure us that they can and will spend their money before December 30th, we're probably going to leave it there. So, for the rest of them, we'll move it around. So most of it has been allocated or 70% of it? or Oh, we yeah. We, we have, well, yes, we passed bills that, that spent or 
put it in different places to you. be spent. I got it. But this is just an opportunity to reevaluate that. And at the end of the day, we, we hope to put whatever's not spent back into the unemployment trust fund, which was hammered, as you can well imagine. Mm-hmm. It was in our, our unemployment trust fund. This is your unemployment benefits. It was the most solvent in the nation before the pandemic hit. We had the most well-funded uh, unemployment trust fund. And as you as you know, employers pay into that. Yeah. And so that fund was depleted, and now we're trying to replenish that so that the impact on the employers is not as great. To the point where the president promised 300 and 100 from the state, and the state didn't do that? I'm not sure I know what you're referring to. The president to. on the stimulus package to continue it. Because the care, the the next stimulus didn't pass in Washington. Oh, yeah, right. The so next through executive o- order, he said three hundred, right. Uh, and I think it was supposed to be coupled with a one hundred. And uh, the governor said we just didn't have the money. Okay, all right. Want to ask you about that? And many other things with the Speaker of the House. We'll talk about it. Sean Tindall, Commissioner from the Department of Public Safety, along with Colonel Randy Ginn in the House, and that's coming up at eight oh five. Our school to be. That probably was playing on that 1969 Pontiac the guy was talking about. Wouldn't you think, Brent? God, stop! Was it 1969 or 1965 Pontiac he mentioned? But those suckers were... 59. It was 1959. You could play football in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I was reliving memories as he was saying he was, all that. He, he was my a parents, 59? My parents had a little uh, Volkswagen Beetle, had a little cubby hole in the back. Oh, I yeah. used to ride back there. I still remember standing up in the middle seat by my father as he drove down the road, you know. Yes, sir. You, there were no seat belts on cars well, back then. The, the back of the windshield on a Beetle. Yes, sir. A Pontiac would have been like a king size bed. Oh, it, it was. A, yeah, you could lie down up there. Get and it. then, and I had one uncle, I don't know why we get into this. I had one uncle, every time he bought a brand new Plymouth, and we'd buy one about every three or four years, he would put those confounded plastic seat covers in there to protect it. <laughs> and if you ever got in that thing, and he lived in <laughs> Greenville, stick to you, you get in there with shorts on. hot. <laughs> <laughs> so did he have them in the house, too? What? No, the, no, the no he didn't have them in the house. But oh. he had them in the car. Oh, and my had... daddy told him one time, he says, uh, Tony, why do you do that? He said, you're struggling on here, getting third-degree burns for three years, then you give it to somebody else, and they got the good seats. That's right. <laughs> oh, so, I had relatives that left the plastic on the dining room chairs, too, you know. That just well, prote- they thought they were protectors. They, 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 would, yeah, they, would, they would be in vogue now for 2020, just wipe them off for the COVID. No, I got a relative who's taken the, the COVID vaccine. Uh, lives way out in the woods. I saw him the other day. I said, COVID hadn't gotten you. He said, no, I took the vaccine. I said, what vaccine? Something he found on the internet, and he took it. He's still <laughs> he's still above ground though. So whatever. Yeah, I, I check on I check on alternate days. I give him a call and see if right. the phone answers. So. Let me play this cut for you. I'm not discouraging anyone from wearing a mask, but the world is full of experts who got big issues wrong, isn't it? Before Americans are forced to accept new restrictions on their freedoms, or even be shamed or even beaten up for not complying with these mandates. Shouldn't state legislators hold hearings and discuss the findings? Then they should pass actual laws about masks, social distancing, all of it that can withstand judicial scrutiny. We must insist on all of this. Demand to see all of the science behind the lockdowns, social distancing, and the masks. Otherwise, don't be surprised if you lose your pre-COVID way of life for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I, and I mentioned that because there were a couple of uh, things that went viral over the week, well, over the last couple of days, on people being arrested for not wearing masks in prayer groups and also at a ball game. And then I get this from our esteemed consultant for the show, Dr. Randy Easterling, that I think you know. Oh, yeah. State legislature years ago granted in statute the state health officer authority under certain circumstances the power to regulate public health emergencies. This would include, but not limited to, the quarantine of those with infectious diseases and steps to limit the uh, spread of such diseases. We have done this forever with diseases such as tuberculosis. So I guess that rule or that is still in effect. I'm not familiar with this statute. Yeah. I would have to do some research. Yeah, but you don't, don't, do you have some concerns with that, too, that we have people who are not elected representatives uh, in the state legislature making these type of uh, 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 executive orders to contain you in your home to limit your freedom. 
Well, I will tell you that's been a topic of great conversation around the country. I yep. have actually personally participated, was asked to participate in two uh, legislative panels this summer, national type uh, panels, where the discussion of uh, overreach was discussed. Mm-hmm. That was the topic. And we have a number of my colleagues in other states who struggled with um, just how far should those executive orders go just how, how much authority yep. should there be and so that is a that is an ongoing topic of conversation um and will continue to be so i think if there is a bill that addresses that would you take a look at it in the, in the legislature or some i think this 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 pandemic which in as far as i can recall is the first in my lifetime yep. brings forward a lot of things that would never been considered before and i think that's one of them good and bad yes sir Next Thursday, you said the legislature is coming back for Thursday and Friday. You gavel in at what time on Thursday? Do you know? I think Tentative. we're looking at ten o'clock. Ten o'clock, probably. Yeah. Is is there going to be a need to extend it beyond that? We hope not. We hope. But not. you can do that if you need to. Yes, sir. Yeah, with Would the you leave, votes, are you, you going to leave it open? A possibility of leaving that open. Well, with the, the resolution that we passed allows us two re, two remaining days to get our work mm-hmm. done. We hope to get down there and get it done in those two days. Uh, we will. Um, hopefully get our, get our work done and be done. When you uh, when you look at what remains there or what some of the topics are going to be for 2021, we just alluded to one, but what, what's going to be the top two or three things we need to do in 2021? Well, I think the, the, the COVID and the pandemic and all the things surrounding that are cont- going to continue mm-hmm. to uh, be a topic of conversation. Um, I don't have anything to base this on other than my opinion, but I, I think entering the winter months now, we're going to see a rise in, in sicknesses, not just COVID, but others. Yep. And, and when you combine the COVID with that, it's going to require a whole lot of attention. Uh, I hope a vaccine will come on the scene soon, um, other than the one that my cousin has. Um, <laughs> That's probably possum juice and stuff. Like who that. knows? <laughs> but, uh, you know, we will have to grapple, of course, with the budget. As I said, we had a budget hearing yep. yesterday. The pandemic has affected the economy. We're going to have to be careful in how we budget uh, the point was made yesterday that our economy seems to be doing okay but we got to remember we got a six billion dollar infusion of federal funds yeah. this year that ain't going to be there next year and you got to you got to contend with that grapple with that. but speaking of the budget while while you mentioned that uh, some of the numbers have been better than we thought yeah, absolutely absolutely they have we've been the first two months of this fiscal year have uh, been above estimate Got any idea what the September looks like since we're the, on the 25th today? Uh, you know, actually, you mentioned the 25th. I think they get mm-hmm. preliminary numbers today. Today, so we can I, get I an idea so. what it looks I like. I think so today. Uh, on this one. The fair is going to be held in one way or the other. Are you okay with that? Apparently it is going forward, yes, sir. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's going to be – I was thinking about that riding over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, those rides are going to take place. Uh, they're going to be wiping down the rides between the rides. I doubt it. Um, you doubt they'll wipe them down? I doubt the they rides. will wipe them down. You know, I, I've been in places where they're – like at my church, <laughs> between services, they're wiping down every seat, every yeah. chair – you know, I don't think they'll be doing that at the fair this year. So, so who knows? Bring what your own wipes for the most say. part. Bring your own bring wipes. your own protection. Well, it's not like some of those things on the Ferris wheel. Some of those rides, you don't gr- you don't grip the bars pretty good. But well, some of them you do. Yeah. Yes, tilt a whirl. That was always my favorite, <laughs> man. You hang on on that ride. What year? At what age did you decide you don't need your organs readjusted? <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a point on the one with the the uh, it has the long chains and the and little swing. Yes, sir. It goes yes, around. Sir. I don't and know. The, and centrifugal it. force spins it. <laughs> That's right. And that was my point many years ago. Perez, have you ever been on one of those? The, the, no, I've never I've, ridden a ride. A ne- <laughs> <sighs> oh, I, I feel for the guy. He's never ridden. Not, not he even bumper cars. He needs not to even get out bumper cars. Nope. All right, let's talk about some of the other things going on in the state legislature. When we look at the the uh, uh, budget, we talked about that. But is there any need for uh, those two days to go back and look at an adjustment of the budget? No, you, sir. You no, talked no, about no. it, but the, these two the days is going to stand as it is. These two days are reserved solely for adjustment in the CARES Act dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, keep in mind, we return first uh, week of January, and. Uh, the different thing this year is that we normally have a, a long window between the end of the session and the start of the next. This year we do not. We will be hopefully finish our work 
you know, a week from it's today. Yeah. And then you got two months to turn right around and, and, and gear up again. So we're going to move right into the next session and uh, hopefully get back to a sense of normalcy. Any of your members uh, currently coming down with COVID? Have COVID? Not to my Did knowledge. You know, everybody's clear? Not to my knowledge. Nobody in the Senate that you know of? Not to my knowledge. Lawsuit with the governor, where is that? Uh, briefs have been filed by both sides. I think the, they're waiting the judge's decision at the lower court level. And that's about it? That's about it. Anything else you want to mention, sir, that while we got you here? Oh, gosh. Uh, Lots of other things? Sir? Anything else? Well, um, gosh, I don't know. I, I, I always enjoy being on your show. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, no, I didn't. Get, I just, we got I a break the, coming up, and I just wanted to take a deep breath. Because I missed been, the donuts when I came in. Did I, did I overlook no, no, them? No, no, no. You're supposed to bring the donuts. Oh, well, supposed to It is good donuts. having people back in the studio, though. And, and since yeah, the last and, time and, you and, left, And, and tell had, me about that. How, yeah. Let me interview you for a second. How did y'all conclude it was okay to bring people back into the, the studio? Well, it's a good point, and I'll tell you, we had a massive, massive uh, number of uh, well-trained, well-educated people. We we convened uh, them all in one place yeah. on Zoom. There you go. And we went through the criteria of probably 50 or 60 different points. Yeah. And then we asked them all, and we put their entire input together through a supercomputer at Mississippi State University. There you go. And then after about three or four days, when it spit it out, it said, okay. Well, okay I commend you for having the hand sanitizer sitting right here at my, <laughs> you, my desk. You think that's enough? Huh? It's I a guess. gallon it's a and a half hole, of sanitizer. Something. What does this say? 950 <laughs> milliliters. I don't know how much that is, but it looks like a bunch. All right, can you spend some more time with me? Yes, sir. we got some other questions. The Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn, will do that. Sean Tendall, uh, the Colonel Randy Ginn, Colonel of the Mississippi Highway Patrol. Speaking of which, we'll ask Philip about that. Back on the Trustmark Studios, it is the Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn. And uh, we were talking about a multitude of different things off the air, so I was just sharing with other people. We were talking about the Trooper School because uh, Commissioner's coming in along with the Colonel of the Mississippi Highway Patrol. And... Uh, how do we do this on a regular basis? Well, it's a good question, Paul, and I've been one who has been who has been passionate and supportive of a an annual trooper mm -hmm. school. Now, let me make a comment before we get to that, though. You got Sean Tyndall coming in here. He is a historic figure, and a lot of people may not realize this, but he served in the state senate, mm -hmm. so he served in the legislative branch. He then went to the court. Uh, as Court of Appeals and served in the judicial branch, and now, because of his new position, he is in the executive branch. I don't know of another individual in recent history that's served in all three mm -hmm. branches. I think of Ed Pittman, who was attorney general and uh, on the court, but I don't know of anybody that's done all three. So you may want to get his autograph when it comes well, to that. Or, as some of the old folks would say, the boy can't keep a job. Well, I, that's another <laughs> option, too. Um, but the trooper the, school the, we talked about. This the over trooper over. school, uh, I, I'm certainly no <clears> expert <throat> on this, but uh, the FBI produces uh, statistics on what they recommend yeah. you should have. I think 600, 600 or 650 or something yeah. like that is what we're supposed to have. Now, we're down to around 400 or 450 and of those, you've got 125 or so that are eligible to retire. So if they all walked mm -hmm. in today and submitted their retirement, you'd be down to about half of what we need. And there are situations that arise, particularly in the wintertime, when we have ice storms and hurricanes. And st well, yeah. we don't have hurricanes in the wintertime. But you know what I mean. We have natural disasters that require uh, them to be moved all to one location, which leaves the rest of the state uh, vulnerable. And so we've, we've had this need for quite some time for a troop for school and the, the, yeah. the pattern we've fallen into is to have one every two or three years of about 40 or 50 people and all that does is just replace the ones who have retired i think we ought to get to a, a position where we have an annual trooper school of about mm -hmm. 20 and there, there's a lot of advantages there first of all you don't have 60 people retiring you know 25 years from now you have have 20 rotating off a year and you're replenishing them each year that would cost about three million dollars the, the the difficulty we've we've had there is searching for a, a stream of revenue to support that but i think uh, if we work hard at it, we can probably find a uh, $3 million a year to support an annual trooper. School. Was not one of the guys in favor of dropping the inspection stickers. And I thought we would have more problems than we do. And we may, and I just don't hear about it. Right. But um, 
Um, I don't see a lot of clunkers on the road. I'm not sure. Maybe in some parts of the state that's uh, evident. But that was uh, did we did we fund that at one time uh, with the inspection stickers? I don't think we did. I think there was a proposal to do that. To do that, that? The, the, the annual uh, the inspection sticker produced. I forget what the amount was. It was around two and a half, three million dollars yeah. a year, and the proposal was to use that to support the trooper school. But I think most people are happy that we did away with the inspection. I think, I think they are. Want to go back to the budget for a second or two? Are how far are we in this process? You just started yesterday, didn't you, or was it the day before? Uh, yesterday was yesterday. what we called first budget hearings. Yeah. We heard from certain agencies, the mainly the big ones, and. Uh, that information will now be taken by the budget analysts who will draft up recommendations. We will reconvene on November the 10th, I think it is, to consider those recommendations. The, uh, when I say we, I'm talking about the Joint Legislative right. Budget Committee. There's seven House members and seven senators who sit on that committee, and uh, we will adopt those recommendations in December. And again, it's just a recommendation. Mm-hmm. The, the recommendation then goes to the legislature in January, and both appropriations committees take those recommendations. But do you have more next week? Uh, no, sir. You're not over? Uh, November the. I think it's not till November the tenth. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We just did one day of it. What about the other agencies? They don't get their budgets? Uh, oh, no, they get their budgets. Yeah. It's just that we don't necessarily have to hear from them. And, and, and in reality, we can call them over to our office any day and say, hey, let us tell us about your I didn't know if the process agency. is every agency had to go through that. No, sir. Okay. It's just the ones that the JLBC requests to come. One of the things we talk about here, and again, Philip Gunn, uh, Speaker of the House, is my guest. One of the things we talk about is, and, and I, I was talking to you off the air about this, every story I read about uh, California Philip, they are leaving California in droves, and I'm talking about businesses. Yes, sir. Residents, too, but businesses. In New York, you see some of the pictures of some of the businesses there, uh, I'm, the restaurants and things like that, but some of the corporate businesses right. are fleeing New York. Most of these people are going to southern states. A lot of them are going to yes, southern sir. states. We're right in the middle of people who are very competitive to us because they have no taxes, or uh, income taxes. Correct. How are we going to do this? Because I, there was a bill put forth, I don't think it passed the House, but to kind of wean us off of that. Right. This is this has been a, a project of mine for many years now. Uh, it's something that I have, have been passionate about and would like to see happen mm-hmm. is the elimination of our income tax. I have, uh, I remember when Brad Mayo was in the legislature from Oxford some time ago, he introduced a bill. To do that, and I, I think I've supported that. Uh, I think we got to phase it out over a period of time. We have. Uh, How it much just does makes that us, bring in? Just, just, on a well, the basis. the annual income tax, uh, the number, the last number I had was about one point nine billion dollars. So nearly two billion, almost dollars. two billion dollars. That's a lot to supplant. It is on a six billion dollar budget, mm-hmm. but uh, I would like to do a, an entire restructuring of our tax structure, uh, ta- the way we tax people. We had a hearing, I held a hearing uh, two or three years ago and brought in experts from Washington about what is a good tax structure, just basic tax policy 101. And they talked about the fact that you want to move toward use taxes, taxes on uh, sales taxes, for example, is a use tax. You want your economy as best you can to be based upon that, and you want to move away from Income taxes, both corporate and individual. Mm-hmm. That's a tax on productivity. Uh, when you tax corporations, you tax income or individual income, right. you're taxing productivity. And so they've got this spectrum of taxes. I guess they call them good taxes and bad taxes. We want to move towards the good taxes as much as possible. But isn't that template already written by the other states that have done this and have the chance to, um, and they've been doing it for a long time? Yes, sir. Some of them have. And in our region, you've got Texas and Tennessee and Florida who Mm -hmm. have no income taxes, I understand it. And we see that that they are becoming more attractive to those people that you're talking about that are yeah. are leaving. I think we'll see that also in the population once we get the uh, 2020. I'm not sure how many people from California or New York we want to attract, though. Well, we have to we have to indoctrinate them somehow. I guess but so. we have a pretty good idea. We have a pretty good <laughs> schedule on that in Mississippi. But there you go. There you go. But anyway, look, you look at people like in, in Texas, and we don't know where they're going to be. Uh, they're slowly but surely they're purple now. They're so. purple. They're purple. And and I, I stay scary. in touch with my legislative colleagues. Um, 
over there, and they're really in a serious fight to maintain Republican control in their in their legislature. As a as an attorney and again Speaker of the House, what's your view when you watch all of this stuff going on in this country? As far well, as these it is, uh, groups. you know, it makes me wonder how much of that has always existed. We just become more aware of it now because of social media and the 24-hour news services, which I don't think help the matter at all. I think they continue to promote division and dissension mm-hmm. and encourage people to fuss and fight. And it just seems like this is the most divisive time in our, in my lifetime. Uh, you got to go back to the late '60s, to be honest with you, uh, to have anything like this as far yeah, well, as I was a little kid back then. I don't know, well, that. and, and that's why I mentioned that. But after this election, I'm, the the these people have got to be held accountable. I think we had in the recent last 24, 48 hours about 300 arrests. Yeah, and there there were thousands and thousands of people who were doing things like busting car windows. Holly Zoller, Z O L L E R. You see the the uh, thing that went viral of the U-Haul that was, as soon as they mentioned the verdict in Louisville, mm-hmm. they found in one of the le- lesser trafficked areas they were staging, uh, a U-Haul was there, and someone filmed them unloading signs, unloading uh, a lot of gear to cause problems. Now we know that that was Holly Zoller, white lady, blonde hair. She's the one that rented the U-Haul truck that was last seen unloading shields and banners and weapons and gas masks in Louisville in preparation for the riots. She is on the board of the Louisville Bail Initiative. At least two of the people on the board of the Louisville Bail Initiative were George Soros Justice Institute fellows. So it was a staged and organized event, is what you're saying. Most of them are. It's good to see you, sir. Thank you for letting me be on. You got it. Stay safe. We will talk to you later. We have Sean Tindall and Colonel Ginn coming in on the other side of the aisle.